all the videos and the videos are like the sound on the videos is awful. It was a bunch of background noise, it's a lot of vibration. I'm gonna try to uh, rescue whatever I can find from the video and uh, or just use it as a B-roll for the background. Basically this video is gonna be for all those people that try to do their CDL get their CDL dri uh, driver's license so they can drive a big truck um, This is just my experience how I did it and how I think it's easier because I have a bunch of friends that were in the process of getting the license and all the advice that I give them were perfectly so This is just gonna be my experience and the way to do it and you don't feel overwhelmed by the whole situation So the way that I acquired my CDO was a uh, circumstance um, I was working at the same company but I was working in a different area of the company and during COVID that area of the company basically disintegrated it wasn't that busy and my boss didn't see the point of keeping that area working so he came over to me and he says you know what I'm, I think I'm gonna close uh, this area right now uh, but I have a small truck that you can drive I had experience driving trucks but it was class C truck so he offered me that opportunity so I can keep working during COVID and I said cool so it's a roll of truck I had experience driving, I never had experience having a uh, roll-off, I uh, used to drive a three service truck with a wood chipper in the back. I didn't got any training to do the roll-off, to be honest, I'm a person that learns pretty quick, so basically I show up to the office, they told me how to put the box on top of the truck and how to get the box down of the truck, and basically that was the training, it was like just go. And then in one of the dump sites, usually uh, when you go to that dump site, you pass for like a little clearing. And that clearing usually has a DOT uh, police there. They just do inspections. When you're driving the big truck, you get random uh, DOT inspections. So I wasn't worried because the truck that I was driving is supposed to be a C class. Like I have my regular C class and it was supposed to be a C class truck. So I wasn't thinking about it, I wasn't tripping. I drove through there a bunch of times. He would randomly pull up people. I got never pulled up by him. This time I got pulled over. Um, I got pulled off to the side. I was talking to the cop and like everything was doing was going fine. Like the he checked the truck, the truck was in perfect condition, all the paperwork was fine, like everything was working awesome but he did notice that my truck uh, at least in here in california is a 26,000 pound truck and on there is considered a class c truck um but he didn't notice on the paper well the truck when the truck came out of the factory was rated for a, i think 46 or 36,000 pounds it was professionally downgraded um but according to the cop, the only the downgrade only works for you to put the tax on the truck and how much you pay uh, for the registration, insurance, and all that stuff. But it doesn't really work for the driver. Yeah, the driver has to be rated for the truck how it came up from the factory. So basically, he stopped me. Uh, to be honest, the cop was pretty nice. Uh, he didn't find me or anything, he just told me call your company and somebody else has to show up and pick up the truck and uh, drive it because you're not allowed to drive it anymore. My boss is like, well, you're going to have to get your CDL. I have a short amount of time to get my CDL. So this is the, the way I did it. Uh, it was fast for me. Well, it was relatively fast because between I got pulled over and I got my driver's uh, CDL permit, it took only three days because I already had some basic knowledge about trucking. If you don't have any basic knowledge about trucking, it's probably going to take you a little bit longer. 
but this is the steps that I follow and this is the step that they work better for me. The first part that I would recommend to do, and this is very important, uh, because nobody tells you this, I ask around, I ask a lot of people and they, people with license, and then you ask these people, most of the people got their license like 10, 15 years ago. But a lot of people don't even remember what the process was. The first thing I would recommend to do is find a facility where you get your physical. You can do it after, but if you bring your physical before you start the whole process, it will be make, it will be everything so much easier. The first thing that you have to follow is uh, I did it here in California. There's a, a place that you can go. There's called Concentra. You just walk there. You ask them for a DOT physical or the license, a commercial license physical. It's like a hundred bucks. It's gonna take probably an hour to do it and basically they just check you if you're in a good physical condition nothing too crazy just basically if they want to check if your uh, blood pressure is fine they want to check if you breathe fine if you have uh, they do like a uh, eye test to check your eyes kind of like they do with the db and if you use glasses they will put there do you use glasses they will do a drug test like to smoke weed or do drugs or anything like that you have to be completely clean to do this this uh, process and they will do random tests they will do random tests as a, as a state depending on the state that you are they will the, the, the DOT will call the company and tell them that you have to they, they will say like oh I want this driver to do a random drug test or the company itself can do you a random drug test until weed is legal in the country you have to follow by that so just a heads up and that will be step one and step two other thing I didn't know that existed and nobody knew, told me about this is you have a regular DMV where all the people go and you have a commercial DMV so because I have been asking around a bunch of people told them, I asked them uh, where I have to go to get the, the lights uh, to start the process and everything, nobody knew this thing, so I just went to the regular DMV, uh, and when I got there, I grabbed my little book, I went and asked to start the process, and the first thing they told me is like, we don't deal with commercial, you have to go to the commercial DMV, then point me into the address where I have to go, to the commercial DMV, and then I went there. I'm telling you to get your physical because when you got there and you start your process, uh, you tell him what kind of license you want to get, you tell him the endorsements and everything, you give him the paperwork, and as soon as he finished filling up all the paperwork and you pay, he's gonna tell you that there's the computers right there, you can go there and do your uh, test right now. If you're ready, you can just turn around Go do your test and finish everything if you already practice and know everything you just like do the whole thing and literally in half an hour an hour depending how long it takes you to do the test you can get your permit and it will be that easy so that's the first uh, step that i would recommend to do is go get your physical and find out where is your commercial DMV. Now, two, two very important questions that you have to ask yourself because driving a truck could be just a job, it could be something that you're just doing right now to get some money, some extra money because they pay, they pay really good, there's no many drivers and uh, if you just want the job, if you're just planning to drive a, a super dumb or any uh, two axle truck you don't really need to have a be pulling a trailer you don't really need to have a, any fancy endorsement then get your commercial B, commercial B license and that will be the easiest one that you can get 
almost the same process, but that will be the one with less steps in the whole process. So, commercial B will be the way to go. If you want it to be quick and simple. Now, if you're not sure if you want to make it a career, because you could make it a career, more if you work for a union, you can work all your life there, you're going to get well paid, good pay, you're going to get, depending on the company, retirement plan, plus union retirement, plus a bunch of benefits, so you can easily make it a career. If you going in through that path, I would recommend to get, like, just get all the endorsements. Just take your time get all the endorsement that you can get uh, and get the class A license do your class A get it with a trailer get your hazmat get your tankers get like all the endorsement that you see there just get them you can do it separately you'll have to worry about everything together but that's the way I would do it if I have to do it again that's the way I would do it when I did it I did it and I only got my regular class B license because of urgency. I really needed to get the license. But then when you decide exactly what you want, what you're going for, then you go and apply, go to the commercial DMV, and you tell the guy uh, what you're doing. They're going to give you a little book with all the, all the stuff and then you can check there what you what is the license that you want to get so, like I said first of all get your everything your the paperwork together and then when you're ready go and put all the doors Basically, he's gonna open an application. When the application is open, he's gonna tell you when you're ready, you can take a test. They have computers. I don't know if in another state it's different, but here in California, they have the computers, and then you just go to the computer and you apply the test there. Um, you can do it at the same time that you start applying your whole thing, but you can do it later. Like, it all depends on how you feel. Now, the the cool thing about this whole process is you can do it in parts. It's not necessary that you have to do everything in one city. So don't feel overwhelmed. Don't feel like you you have to learn all this stuff. You have to like do all this. Like no, don't feel overwhelmed. Get your little book from the DMV and get uh, open YouTube and it's a bunch of channels that they have uh, questions and answers. Questions and answers. Make sure you find the channel that it has all the rules for your state because each state has different rules. There's two ways I, I would recommend this uh, process. The first uh, test, the written test. Um, the first one will be if you have any knowledge of how a truck works and I'm talking about like a regular mechanic knowledge of how a truck works uh, air brakes anything like that you can probably just go to YouTube and study the questions and answers because you will have an, uh, a rough idea of how everything works if you're a person doesn't know anything doesn't know anything about mechanic it doesn't know anything about trucks, he doesn't know anything about air brakes, he doesn't know anything about any of that stuff. Um, what I'm going to recommend is read your little book, the manual the DMV gives you. If you can do it twice, just read the whole thing. It doesn't matter like if, you, if you're not understanding what he's saying, just, just read it. Just read the whole thing, finish reading uh, the whole thing, and then watch videos. Watch the YouTube videos, watch the YouTube videos when you finish the first time and then uh, go read it again and then watch the YouTube videos again and it will stick, everything will stick again. So uh, that's the way that I would recommend, do your reading test. Uh, 
when you get all the idea of the general knowledge tests then uh, go apply finish your general knowledge test this will all depend on how your testing skills are there's some people that are really good at practicing like reading learning and then just doing the test and then some other people that take a little bit more time for, for it to do it so uh, what I would say is like do your general uh, knowledge test finish it when you finish that then you can stop right there and then you can study for the air brake test and then the same thing go to YouTube find the air brake test find questions and answers practice 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 and then show up do your air brake test that's the only endorsement that I will say a hundred percent you have to get you can get the B license without a, uh, an air, uh, well, it depends on the place, but you can get an, uh, a B license without the air brakes, but then you just, re you, then you just allow to drive trucks that don't have air brakes. And then it's basically like 3% of the trucks don't have air brakes. So just get your endorsement, air brakes, and then you get your uh, trailer test or basically the coupling test. It's, uh, there's another rating test that it tells you all about how you're supposed to uh, pull up a trailer. And then when you finish that, then you can do your hazmats and you can do your um, uh, your tankers. Hazmats and tankers is completely optional. I would say uh, don't get it if you don't like if you don't want to don't get it but i would recommend you because that will open up your options for a lot of job positions there's a lot of job positions that you don't even have to deal with hazmat materials but they require hazmat for some reason so if you can get it get all the stuff ready and that will be the first step but you can do this in parts you don't have to do it everything in one sitting you can do one test practice that whole day when you finish your first test you already passed it then you practice and then the next day show up and do the other test and then the next day show up and do the other test just like don't don't try to consume all this information at once because it's gonna make it really difficult for you and it's gonna confuse you because a lot of the questions are the same question just in a little a little bit different format a little different way that they put in the question or they like presenting the question and that's gonna confuse you and that's when you get wrong answers so take your time finish all your tests like if you if you do it like I said you presented your um, medical first when you finish everything then go to the guy tell him you pass all your tests the guy's gonna check in the computer he's gonna realize that you pass all your tests and when that happens he's gonna give you your permit as soon as you got your permit I think this part I have to double check but I'm pretty sure that you have to wait for a month before they allow you to book a driven test they don't care how you do your uh, your uh, driving test they don't care they don't really care if you go to school they don't really care if you get trained by a company they don't really care if you get buy a truck and then you do in that truck so this is the second part of the whole process and this is where it gets a little bit tricky if you already work on a company that has trucks and uh, has class C trucks and you have a general knowledge of how a class C truck works and this is the way I did it uh, and that same company has class B trucks ask the company if they will allow you to use one of the trucks for your test and if they will let you use one of your one of the drivers uh, because when you have your permit you have to have another driver with you all the time you're not allowed to drive uh, by yourself with a permit so this is the way I did it basically what I did was practice uh, on the trucks the most important part that I will say is, is first learn your air brake test and cabin test. 
they're gonna ask you about a bunch of safety features in the cabin and then you're gonna do like a little test with your air brakes and that what I would say practice that thing to the teeth find somebody that sits with you make a list of all the checks that you have to fill up and then don't let that per person tell you anything just do it once twice three times four times five times every time you finish your test ask the guy if you if you miss something you're gonna miss something it always happens you're gonna miss something something like really simple you're gonna miss and the thing is when you're doing the test the person that is testing you is not gonna help you at all he's not gonna tell you if you're doing it fine if you're doing it wrong if you're finished if you're not finished it's like he's gonna ask you let me know when you're finished you can be sitting there for an hour in the truck until you say I'm finished then he's gonna test you and if you get one thing wrong they're gonna tell you that you didn't pass and you only have two other two other opportunities to do it again so they will not allow you to drive the truck they will not allow you to do the track the driving in the little courtyard where you park the truck and all that stuff they will not allow you to do anything of that if you don't pass the, the inside the cap test so learn that part first learn it learn it learn it learn it you can even tell the person when you finish that test because when you pass that test you're done you pass that test you can tell the person okay I don't feel like I don't feel that I have the energy to do the other ones. Can I come back later? And they will say yes, but you, then you just pass the air brake once and then you don't have to do that again. So don't worry about the other ones. First, learn perfectly how to do the walk around and the uh, in cap test. And then when you pass that, uh, if you already been practicing in the truck how to uh, reverse with the trailer or how to reverse a truck at all if you're doing a class B then I would say the other ones are pretty easy uh, the in-cap test I failed that one twice the third time I was literally sweating when I was doing the test and I finished it I passed it uh, they jump me to do the other ones like drive between the cones park the parallel parking and all that stuff was pretty easy for me it was like really easy uh, then they take you out and drive you around the city a really important thing is some part of their they do that, that they do this in California I don't know if they do it in some place else but they do this in California at some point of the trip you're gonna be driving on it, put attention to all the signs. They are designed specifically for trucks. Uh, height of the bridge, uh, weight of the truck, uh, weight in the bridges, and stuff like that. Just put attention to all that stuff because at some point of the travel, the guy is gonna ask you, hey, what the sign back there said? If you don't answer that, it's gonna fail you. If you don't know how to chip, if you're grinding the chip every time you shift the gears it's gonna fail you like it's gonna give you like a couple of time to do it and then three four times you do it and it's gonna fail you so try to learn all that stuff and another very important thing that I forgot to mention earlier is try to make the test in a truck with chip like a shifting truck it's a bunch of automatic trucks right now you can drive an automatic truck all your life it's fine but if you learn how to shift then you have the hundred percent of the trucks you can drive everything you can drive automatic and you can drive a uh, you can drive a stick shift if you only have the automatic uh, if you show up to do the test in an automatic truck they're gonna lock you in in that you're your driver's license in the back is gonna say that you, you have a restriction on automatic trucks so that means that you're not allowed to drive a stick shift even if you know how to do it if the DOT pulls you over and see you you're driving a stick shift they're gonna give you a fine so have that in mind and yeah that's it don't 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 be overwhelmed by, by the whole process doing steps is designed to be doing steps if you want to do it 
if you don't have any knowledge of trucks like I said before you bet your best option is doing through a school it's a bunch of schools if you would go on Google and look it's a bunch of uh, truck schools the prices can vary from seven hundred dollars to three thousand five thousand dollars and they're gonna teach you everything they're gonna teach you how to drive the truck how to back up they usually have a small trucks so when you go and do your test you have a, a smaller truck you don't have to be thinking that you have a gigantic truck that you have to maneuver there and they're gonna teach you like I said like the in-cap process they're gonna teach you like the walk around outside and you have to point all the mechanic parts how they work what they do it sounds overwhelming but it's, it's if you practice it it's pretty easy and like I said is this whole thing is in steps so you can do this in steps and uh, and that will be easier to do it I did in steps like I say a huge procrastinator and uh, doing it in steps helped me a lot so that's the way that I would say you should do it if you have any other questions let me know start by doing your medical go and get your physical that will make you feel kind of obligated and go and do the second part then do the second part then do the third when you realize you're halfway there so try it guys if you have any questions leave it down in the comments uh, like and subscribe ring that uh, notification bell and I'll see you guys in the next one